Almost everything you've been told about the metaverse is wrong. And in this video, I'm gonna shed some light on what the metaverse actually is and why you should be paying closer attention to it. The word metaverse is a huge buzzword right now, and people are using it to describe all sorts of things from VR, virtual spaces, and even Mark Zuckerberg's vision of future society. So what exactly is the metaverse? First of all, the metaverse does not exist. Yet, what I will describe in this video is the hypothetical future of what these technologies will evolve into. But as you will see in the definition of the metaverse, this is not something that currently exists today. You may laugh at it now, legs, but it's important that people start to understand what exactly this thing is and how potentially scary it can become if we don't take it seriously. A large portion of my research for this video started with the book, The Metaverse and How It Will Revolutionize Everything by Matthew Ball. While I don't necessarily agree with everything written in this book, it does a really good job of establishing not only the ambitious vision for what the metaverse is, but also the hurdles it will take to create it. The book heavily references the first work of fiction that coined the phrase metaverse, Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson, which I've also read in preparation for this video. I've also spent hours inside of VR chat, read Ready Player One, and I've seen at least one Matrix movie. Also, as you can tell, I'm a virtual avatar whose existence is bound to a virtual environment. So who better to describe the metaverse than me? If you find this video helpful, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up so that the algorithm can spread this video as far as possible. Possible. Thank you. Before we talk about the metaverse, there's a few terms that we need to define out of the gate so that there's no confusion on what we're discussing here. Virtual reality is a 3D simulation of an environment that replaces our sensory experience with an artificial one. Augmented reality is a 3D simulation that is overlaid onto our physical reality. Virtual worlds are interactive 3D environments in which a user can interact with objects inside the world and other users represented by digital avatars. None of these things are the metaverse. This is a point of confusion that I see a lot of people making. They conflate virtual reality and augmented reality with the metaverse. Think of it like the internet and social media. Social media is a way to access the internet. Social media itself is not the internet. Even virtual reality headsets are just one method of accessing the metaverse. As you will see, the definition of metaverse specifically leaves out the method in which it's accessed. Spoiler alert, this is mostly because of Fortnite. So what is this definition? I'm going to quote Matthew Ball here because I think it's an ambitious definition that lays out in very clear terms what the metaverse is and also what it is not. There are 10 criteria that need to be hit in order for us to call it the metaverse. The definition is as follows. A massively scaled and interoperable network of real-time rendered 3D virtual worlds that can be experienced synchronously and persistently by an effectively unlimited number of users with an individual sense of presence and with continuity of data. These criteria are all important. You can't remove any of them and still call it the metaverse. You should definitely check out the book for a great deep dive into why the definition needs to include all of these terms. The short version though, is that the metaverse is a network, not a place. The network must be a real-time simulation, like a match in an online video game. Digital collectibles that you receive in one part of the metaverse, like your avatar, should be able to transfer it to another part seamlessly. The true metaverse will not be controlled by any country or corporation, much like the internet, is not a network controlled by one entity. And it must be accessible by millions of people all at once without any interruption. This definition is very ambitious and likely something that would not come true for at least another 15 or 20 years. And this isn't a critique of the technology. Rather, it's a critique of today's business landscape. When the internet first started, it took a collection of individuals that volunteered their time and efforts years to put protocols into place that would become the standard of how computers interact with the internet. There was a period of about 20 years called the protocol war where people debated the process of standardization for how to access the internet. The HTTP colon slash slash in a URL is a result of this period. Now, billion dollar tech companies are all trying to push their own standardized process and not playing nicely with each other. They have no incentive to do so. Facebook's virtual world and Roblox's virtual world are more like meta galaxies. The true metaverse will contain all virtual worlds in the same way that the internet contains all websites. Also, quick side note, as you might have noticed, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to refer to Meta the company as Facebook in order to avoid any confusion between the company and the metaverse itself. It's as if Microsoft in the late 90s renamed their company Cyber to capitalize on the phrase cyberspace. For all the great information that Matthew Ball's book provides, it seems to ignore the larger message of the works of fiction that it bases its definition on. The message of these books is that life offline is more precious than life online. But what I do think this book gets right is that there are many checkpoints for us to call it the metaverse. People like Mark Zuckerberg want you to think that all these checkpoints will be achieved in the next two to three years, which is why they've rebranded Facebook to distract you from their collecting and selling of millions of people's data without their knowledge used to shift global power dynamics via Cambridge Analytica. But 
that's for a different video. If you can't remember the giant definition of what the metaverse is, that's fine. Some of this is confusing by design. I've come up with three different ways that I use to describe what the metaverse will become, what I call the three eyes, to help me think about it more clearly. But before we dive into these things, please smash the like button if you like what you've seen so far. Thanks. Number one. The metaverse is invisible. Now, what do I mean by that? The metaverse is something that will not be immediately obvious. When you log into Instagram or TikTok, you are actually logging into the internet. And these apps act as an interface for that internet. However, today it's not as common to tell someone, I'm gonna log into the net today. Rather, you just say that you're going on Instagram. The metaverse, will operate the same way. It's not a tangible thing that people can log into, but rather acts as the entry point to these virtual spaces. I do wanna quickly circle back to the misconception that the metaverse and virtual reality are the same thing. They are not. The metaverse definition, according to Ball, purposely does not include the device responsible for accessing the metaverse. This is largely in part due to the popularity of games such as Minecraft, Roblox, and Fortnite. Most of the users that access these platforms are doing so from their phones, tablets, or computers. But these platforms still hit the criteria for being considered, at the very least, meta galaxies. Virtual reality, as well as augmented reality, are just different access points for the metaverse. So when Mark Zuckerberg says that Facebook's headsets are necessary to enter the metaverse, understand that this is a marketing technique used to associate his company with his vision of the future. By the time the metaverse does exist, the technology will be as integrated into our society as our phones are to the internet today. That's because there's one reason above all else that will make sure this happens. Money. It's all about the money when it comes to the metaverse and companies will naturally find their incentive to make the metaverse as seamless and as invisible as possible simply because of how much money they're gonna make. Their incentives to create better hardware and software will always be based around how much they can profit on doing so. Every year, the technology is going to improve. Every year, the graphics are going to get better. And every year, we're going to think less and less about the devices we're using and more about the thing itself that we're accessing. Number two. The metaverse is inevitable. Whether Mark Zuckerberg gets his way and Facebook becomes the primary source of access or not, society has already pushed the snowball down the hill and there is simply no stopping it. You can think of the metaverse as one giant video game. With that in mind, let's look to video game companies to predict just how the metaverse is going to grow. Take Roblox, for example. In February, 2016, Roblox had 9 million users, which is already an impressive number of people. Fast forward to 2022, where Roblox reported over 202 million monthly active users, 43 million of which were daily active users. You might not have heard of Roblox, and before 2020, I certainly had not heard of it either. The generation that is growing up on this platform is mostly users under 12, who already understand the fundamentals of an interactive 3D open world concept. When this generation gets old enough, not only is this understanding going to be universal, but they're going to start expecting more of this. Earlier, I said that the biggest challenge to the metaverse will be the interoperability between businesses. Today, this might seem like a mountain of a task, but the clock is always ticking, and eventually, we will reach a point where there is a standardized method for accessing the metaverse. The biggest complaint I see about the metaverse today is the graphics. When Zuckerberg announced the new headsets in October, 2022, the biggest response I saw was from people making fun of the graphics and how rudimentary they looked. In my opinion, this is a very short-sighted view. Of course, Facebook could add ray tracing, high resolution textures, etc., to their platform because this is actually very easy to do these days. However, their focus right now is on scalability and bringing this platform to as many people as possible, which means, for now, compromising on the graphics. Currently, the technology to make the metaverse happen isn't quite there yet, but Facebook is running out of time and is trying to fast track their version of the metaverse. Just look at Google Glass and how everyone made fun of the concept of augmented reality. But now, augmented reality is a $1 trillion industry and Google is already working on the Google Glass successor that is predicted to be much more welcomed than the first version. Just because the graphics now can't run at the level of your gaming PC, which costs you $6,000, doesn't mean that they won't inevitably get better and better and better every year. Let's be honest, if we really cared about hyper-realistic graphics, Graphics, no one would have bought a PlayStation 2, the most successful console of all time. And it's not like Roblox has amazing graphics because the nine-year-olds who are playing it don't care. And I don't mean that sarcastically. I really mean that the nine-year-olds who are playing this really only focus on interactivity rather than graphics. This being said, there is still one main reason above the rest why the metaverse is inevitable. You guessed it. It's money. A detail I left out earlier about Roblox is that in the span of three years from 2018 to 2021, the Roblox Corporation increased its value from $2 billion to $38 billion. This, in addition to the success of Fortnite and Minecraft, caused every single company in Silicon Valley to raise their eyebrows and reconsider their approach to the metaverse. When a company like Facebook says that they're building the metaverse to help businesses enter a new era of 
businessing. What they really mean is that they saw how much money they could make from the metaverse, and they're doing everything in their absolute power to make that happen. The entire time I was reading Matthew Ball's book, I couldn't help but think to myself, through all the what and the how of the metaverse, there was no compelling reason why it should exist at all. But I noticed a pattern throughout every chapter when it talked about growth. Almost all of the metrics of growth throughout the book revolve around economics. Nobody took Roblox seriously until it was valued at $38 billion. As a matter of fact, nobody took World of Warcraft seriously until it became its own economy. <laughs> The metaverse is going to happen because these publicly traded companies are only focused on growing every year to please their shareholders. With the metaverse, they have a unique opportunity to grow to unprecedented levels and make a bazillion dollars. Ball himself even writes that the extent to which the metaverse succeeds will depend, in part, on whether it has a thriving economy. Social media came as a result of Facebook becoming a gigantic tech company, and suddenly there was an opportunity for everyone to make money from it. It wasn't just about connecting to your friends anymore. Now, it's a place to target consumers with more data than has ever been accessible in human history. But this didn't happen overnight. This took time. Just like how the internet took about 40 years to go from obscurity to mass adoption, the metaverse is still in its earliest days. And the more money that billion dollar tech companies stand to make from this new economy, the more sure it is to come to fruition. So I've established that the metaverse is invisible and inevitable, but there's a third eye, and this is the most important one. Number three, the metaverse is irresponsible. Let's go back to those fictional examples I mentioned earlier. In Ready Player One, the main character lives his life inside the Oasis, a virtual reality network that connects everybody together. But in the real world, his life is depressing. He lives in a massive low-income community while he and his aunt have to scrape for food and money to keep them alive, with the hope that they can hit the lottery and find the Easter egg that will bring them fame and fortune. The thesis at the end of the book is that you should cherish your life outside of the virtual one because the real world can never be replaced. Unsurprisingly, Silicon Valley reads stories like this one one and hyper fixates on the shiny things, the virtual worlds, and completely misses the point of the book. They get excited about driving the DeLorean from Back to the Future and completely miss the part about how the real worlds in these stories are dystopian nightmares because of the existence of the virtual world. Apparently, storytellers have more control over the vision of the future than tech bros in Silicon Valley do. Personally, I see Ready Player One as a failure of a story to communicate why the virtual world that everyone operates in is problematic. When we create stories like this and send them out to the world, we need to take responsibility and understand that people will look at them and base their own vision of the future around the stories we have given them, for better or for worse. If we just look at the virtual reality aspect of the metaverse, there's a lot of potential for things to go very wrong very quickly. Let's assume for a minute that virtual reality becomes the most popular way to access the metaverse. VR is proven scientifically to be more influential on people than TV, phones, and computers. This is mostly because virtual reality is a an empathy machine. It allows people to not only imagine what it's like to walk in somebody's shoes, but also to show them exactly what it looks like and sounds like. If this influential piece of technology is put into the hands of people that have already been proven to manipulate the opinions of the general public for their own gain, it will absolutely fast forward our society towards that dystopian nightmare that the characters in Ready Player One desperately want to escape from. If Matthew Ball's definition of the metaverse does manifest, that means no one company will control the metaverse. Great. To be honest, however, this is a very optimistic outlook of the future. It's very clear to everybody that Mark Zuckerberg wants to position Facebook as the global leader for all things metaverse. And because the social media side of Facebook is quickly depleting, Facebook is more desperate than ever to fast forward to the point in history where everyone accesses the metaverse all the time so they can claim to their shareholders that they were right all along. If you want a clear example of why the metaverse is irresponsible, just look at the effects of social media on children. It's more clear than ever that people who are more active on social media have a larger chance of developing anxiety, depression, attention deficit disorders, as well as higher rates of suicide. This is because these apps are programmed to access and manipulate human psychology. This is not a conspiracy theory either. This is straight from the developers of these websites. When we get a notification on our phone, it's hacking into the part of our brain that processes dopamine, giving us those feel-good chemicals before we even open it. When we don't get those notifications, however, we start to look at ourselves in less than flattering ways. Take this concept and apply it to virtual reality, and it's very clear how quickly things can go wrong if this technology is allowed to influence children the way that Facebook did for years without any consequence. All this being said, there's still one reason above the rest why the metaverse is irresponsible. And this time, it's not money. 
Just kidding. Of course it's money. The internet started as a wonderful network for people to connect with each other, to share travel experiences, recipes, and other common interests. But very quickly, capitalists saw an opportunity to make money from this, more money than anyone ever thought was possible. By tapping into the darkest corners of human behavior and psychology, these billion dollar tech companies were able to completely radicalize society and divide us up to be more extreme than we ever have been in our history. And they were able to make trillions of dollars doing so. In 2017, the world's most valuable resource changed from oil to data, user data to be more specific. When you have large amounts of data on everyone in the world and you have malicious intent to change society for the betterment of capitalist interests, this data becomes weaponized. Plus, all the data that is so valuable to these companies are only from Web2 user experiences like Facebook and YouTube. If we start to introduce devices like virtual reality headsets, tracking our eye movements and physical behaviors, it becomes pretty clear that the data generated from these movements has the potential to become the most sought after information in history. Companies that want to influence us subconsciously, for example, to manipulate elections, now have a direct line of access to our fears and desires. Okay, obviously, this is worst case scenario. There's no guarantee that the metaverse will inherently be more influential on human behavior than the internet was, despite what predictions have been made. But like the stories we based our inspiration for the metaverse on, we have to look at the good and the ugly of those worlds. Personally, I love virtual reality so much. I'm excited by the potential of this medium to tell more engaging stories and connect with people like we've never connected with anyone before. In fact, I started an immersive animation studio specifically because of this passion of mine. I might not want to do my nine to five job in the metaverse, but I can't deny that it looks like a roaring good time. I would love to believe the best in people, that we will see this as an opportunity to responsibly plan for a future that gives everyone equal opportunity and enhances the real world we live in. But I can't be naive in thinking that there are not people and corporations out there that will try to manipulate this future towards their own self-interests. I'd like to believe that eye tracking in VR will not lead to ads that we can't look away from. But if there's money to be made from tampering even further with human psychology than we already have, greed will always prevail. The metaverse is coming whether you're ready or not. And believe me, it will be here before you know it. So I guess my takeaway from this video is this. When Mark Zuckerberg talks about the metaverse and how it's going to change the lives of everyone in the future, we should be careful about laughing it off as a passing fad. We should be taking the metaverse seriously, the same way that those people who took the internet seriously 25 to 30 years ago were able to capitalize on it and change the world. If the metaverse is going to be invisible, inevitable, and irresponsible, we would be insane to ignore all the warning signs of a potentially quadrillion dollar industry. Honestly, enjoy the next few years because these could be the last days of living in the physical reality for the rest of human history. I thought I was supposed to be the robot. <laughs>ask you, what's your opinion of the metaverse? Are you excited about it? Are you scared of it? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. If you like this breakdown of the metaverse, please share it with a friend so that more people can understand what the metaverse is. I clearly have a lot of thoughts on the metaverse and would love to discuss it more in the future, so your likes and subscriptions mean everything to me. Until next time, thanks for watching.